Viola Desmond was a black Canadian businesswoman and civil rights activist who became a symbol of the struggle against racial segregation in Canada. One of the most famous incidences in her life occurred in 1946 when she was arrested for refusing to leave a whites-only section of a movie theater based in Nova Scotia. I'm your host, Derek, and today we're going to talk about the impact of being a civil rights activist and the legacy we can all leave. In celebration of Black History Month 2023, I want to highlight the one and only Viola Desmond. Where do I begin? James Albert was an influential community leader in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He was a successful barber who owned his own barbershop and was an active member of the black community. He was also a member of the local branch of the University Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, an organization founded by Marcus Garvey that advocated for a black self-determination and economic empowerment. Gwendolyn Irene Davis was also an active member of the community and was involved in various community organizations, including the Ladies Auxiliary of the African United Baptist Association. She was a devoted mother and instilled in her children the importance of education, self-respect, and community involvement. James and Gwendolyn were the parents of Viola Desmond. I thought it was very important to give you the backstory of where this amazing woman is coming from, what the foundation she's being raised with, and why that is important, and why that shaped who she is and who she became, right? Our history, our history is what we are made up of, right? Whether you were in that time era or not, the history, the lineage is passed down and it's a part of who you are. Yes, it's possible to deviate from that lineage. Very possible. And many of us are falling victim of that. Where we've fallen short. We, we weren't able to make it to the point where we became the person we were intended to be, according to our history. But there are plenty of us who are still trailblazing and needs to be celebrated for that. And Viola is a perfect example uh, and why I wanted to celebrate her today. So thank you for tuning in. And I hope you appreciate the story that's about I'm about to share with you. And, um, you know, if you enjoy and appreciate this content, please make sure you like, subscribe and share. I'm trying to grow the subscription numbers as high as I can get it, but with your support, anything's possible. So please go ahead, before we continue, hit that like, hit that bell notification, so that you don't miss another great content like this one, right? Every subscription is greatly appreciated. So <clears throat> let's dive into it. Now, Viola Desmond was greatly influenced by her parents and their commitment to social justice. And, you know, the community involvement that they were all a part of was significant. Her father's business success and involvement in the UNIA taught her the importance of economic empowerment, you know, self-determination as a black person. Her mother's community involvement and dedication to education instilled in Viola the importance of giving back and using her skills and talents to benefit her community. And this is important. It's not just about her. Everything her and her family did was about the community. That's, well, you know, that's worth noting. Both of Viola's parents were strong role models for her and instilled in her a sense of pride in her black heritage and the importance of standing up for what is right. These values and lessons from her parents would play a significant role in her life and her fight for civil rights and justice. Viola's story and legacy have inspired generations of Canadians and people around the world to fight for justice and equality, although we all need equity for a better society. 
Born in 1914 in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Viola Desmond grew up in a family of 10 children. Desmond attended business college in Montreal and later opened her own beauty salon in Halifax, which catered primarily to black women. In 1946, at the time, racial segregation was still legal in Canada, and black people were routinely, routinely discriminated against in all areas of life, including education, housing, and public accommodations. In November of 46, Desmond's life changed forever. She was on a business trip to New um, Glasgow, Nova Scotia, and decided to attend a movie at the Roseland Theater. She purchased a ticket for the main floor, not realizing that the theater was racially segregated and took a seat in the whites-only section. <laughs> when she refused to move from her seat in the whites-only section to the balcony reserved for black patrons, she was now forcibly removed from the theater, arrested and jailed overnight. This is our history. And it's rich. So, stay with me. Desmond was charged with tax evasion rather than the violation, right? Rather than violating the segregation law. And she was fined $20 in court. It may not sound like a lot to you today, but back then, it was a significant amount, right? So, <clears throat> and it reflected the underlying motivation of the authorities to punish Desmond for challenging the status quo. Despite the ruling, Desmond continued to fight for justice and her case became a catalyst for the civil rights movement in Canada. Her case sparked the movement for racial justice in Canada and her courageous stand against segregation became a rallying point for black Canadians who were fighting against discrimination as well as segregation. Her willingness to face the consequences of her actions made her a symbol of the struggle for civil rights in Canada. One of the significant ways that Desmond's case benefited black people in Canada was through the establishment of the Nova Scotia Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NSAACP. The organization was formed in response to Desmond's arrest and was instrumental in advocating for civil rights in the province. All it took was for her to stand up for what she felt was wrong, right, against her, but was right for all humans. And with that, within a moment's time, she is now a symbol, right? She's now, her case has now become a catalyst for many other movements, now that is how change takes place. So when I hear people say you can't evoke change, it's just you and the system this and the system that. Sometimes you just need the spark. One of my favorite artists of all time said this before, um, Tupac Shakur. And she said, she, he doesn't want to be, I'm paraphrasing here, so don't hang me. He doesn't want to be the one to, to be the change. But he can be the spark. He can be the spark that ignites the change, right? That inspires others to want to fight for this change. And this is what Viola has done. She ignited. She was the spark, but she also ignited it in so many of us back then that a lot has changed for us to have this privilege, and these rights that we now have. So when you feel like you don't have much, I need you to pay attention to what you currently have, your situation, your environment, the government, although it may not be perfect, but you have the privileges, right, that all those before you had fought for. You are benefiting from all those sacrifices. So I say all that to tell you, make it count. You do matter. Your life does matter. Just make it count. Someone else coming up behind you can benefit from that. Okay? So, don't lose sight.
Don't lose sight of your value. Desmond's case also paved the way for other significant achievements in the fight for racial justice in Canada. Here are some examples for you, right? In 1954, the Canadian government abolished legal segregation in Nova Scotia. In 1964, it passed the Canadian Human Rights Act, which made discrimination on the basis of race, religion, and gender illegal. One woman. One woman evoked such change, right? And that's what I mean. The impact of Viola's case extended beyond Canada. In the United States, her story inspired civil rights activists, including Rosa Parks, who cited Desmond as a source of inspiration for her own refusal to give up her seat, right? On a Montgomery, Alabama bus in 1955. Desmond's legacy continues to inspire and motivate people to fight for justice and equality. Now I'm adding equity. And her story is a powerful reminder of the importance of standing up against injustice and discrimination across the planet. Now in recognition of her courage and contributions, Desmond was pardoned by the Canadian government in 2018 and is celebrated as a national icon and civil rights trailblazer. By the way, those of you who don't know, she is the woman on our $10 bill. Okay? Despite the challenges she faced, Desmond remained committed to fighting for justice and equality. She opened a beauty school so that she can actually help more black women learn new skills and gain economic independence. And she continued to be an advocate for civil rights until her passing in 1965. How incredible is that? How incredible is that? Right? Her story continues to inspire and motivate people to fight against all forms of discrimination and to stand up for what is right, no matter the personal cost. So, I hope this story inspires you. I hope the story ignites something in you. I hope the story sparks a change. And it may not be a change for the social climate, but a change within you as an individual, which I think it has to start with you first. Right? Once you find that inspiration and that spark takes place and you're able to change who you currently are into a better version of yourself, that's when you start to plant the seeds indirectly where those who surround you will start to reap benefits of that change. That energy that you're going to give off is what people are going to start to feel. And when they start to feel that and take that and run with it, guess what? You've just now ignited so many people just by starting with you. And wanting to be a different person. A different version of yourself. Okay. So before I wrap this up. I want to thank you. Miss Viola uh, Desmond. And your contribution. To the privileges. And the benefits that I'm reaping. Today. Thanks to your sacrifices and courage. So. Thank you for another wonderful. Black History Month. And recognizing who you were to who I am and the person I'm going to become and all those who get to hear your story through this podcast. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.